and then that's when the the band element would start to congeal this this ooze that was was happening and then like out of nowhere he'd come in with lyrics for it then it started to take on the shape of a song and then that's when many times we would like like if you if you see the beginning, say to baby snakes, it's a classic example how the baby the, to start the thing starts and, and he yeah. change it and no do it this way no do it that way oh can you play it this way you know nope that ain't working and the funniest thing with Frank <laughs> that used to kill me is like you know as a musician as an artist you have your own vision of what you would do if you were in the driver's seat and. You'd want your kind of little vision to congeal with Frank's. You know what I mean? You'd, you'd like to, I, I would have liked to think that many times what I was thinking in my mind might be what he would think. So you'd, you'd sort of personalize it and, you know, you'd, you wouldn't try to second guess him. But I would try to think, well, what is he getting at here? What, what, is, he, what is his vision here? Is he, what's he seeing, hearing? Anyway, um, a lot of times... Frank would just stop me and say, that's it, Tommy, great! Or he'd start laughing, or you'd, you'd know you hit the mark, you know? Yeah. And so I'd write it down. I, I, I always had a little shorthand method of taking down, and sometimes whoever was Clone Meister would have a tape going or whatnot. Anyway, he'd be really happy, go on to the next song, whatnot. Go back to the rehearsal the next day. We start playing the tune, playing exactly what I played the day before. Frank would look at me and scowl and say, what in the fuck was that? What are you playing? I was a little okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I said, I'm playing just what the Christ you told me to play yesterday. He said, I didn't give you that yesterday. I said, Frank, yes, you did. I did not. Frank, I have it written down on a piece of paper. Arthur, do you have that on tape? Yeah, I got it on tape, Tommy. <laughs> and then he'd, he'd know. He'd know he was cornered like a little cat. And, and he'd say, he'd wait a long time before he'd say it, but he always would say, well, I don't like it today. <laughs> don't ever play it again. Yes, Frank. And then, you know, sometimes you'd sneak it back in, too. We would always, like, put a little taste, because sometimes they were the coolest things, you know? That was the great thing, man, when it got chiseled out to an to a area where you were really, like, jiving with it, you know what I mean? And it was, you were thinking about, wow, we're talking about this socio-political situation, and, and the music to it is so emphatic, it, it like really is wedded perfectly and, and the thing is an odd meter because that's how we say this line you know that's another thing I loved about Frank the reason he used odd meter wasn't for odd meter's sake it was because that's how we talk you know what I mean it rolled off the tongue you didn't even have to think you could almost do it blind uh, but in any case the you did uh, have a say there say you did have a say in constructing the oh tunes. all the time we were yeah. we were hired to be creative yeah. you know what I mean I'm lucky I got a couple of, you know, like Yo Cats and uh, yeah, one other yeah. tune he gave me some, some co-writing on. Yeah. But no one ever really got co-writing. I was, I was very fortunate to get that from Frank. Very few guys got co-writing with him, especially in the later days. Uh, but the, the beauty to me was that when we finally got the song constructed, went on the road with it, chiseled it out, did you know played it so that it was part of our daily routine you know what i mean we totally metabolized the tune then to go back and record the song i mean there's nothing like that to a lot of times you go in and do a session and it's the last time the first and the last time you'll ever hear the song again yeah. for for me personally yeah. being a hired gun and you know it's like okay the person had a vision there but you know, when you really know a song intimately, when it becomes your friend and you, you live with it, the, when you finally do record it, the intimacy that you have as a player and an artist, it, it just it makes it so much deeper, uh, the, the meaning of the song to you. So that, that was always some of my favorite moments was recording with Frank. I mean, I shake your booty. I, I I must have spent six months practically alone with Frank with that record. Yeah. I did most, all pretty much all of the keyboard overdubs. Yeah. And most of the vocal overdubs too. He just let me go wild on that record. How about Joe's Garage and that Joe's Garage was a different thing that Frank had, has told about. Say. Uh, that discipline thing. I mean, um, Frank said that. Uh, Peter Wolf was better on these tracks in Joe's Garage because he could play that 
easy stuff.